Yeah. Well, uh, Nick, uh, right. thank you so much. So, um, I'd like to ask you because you started off with your startup in mm -hmm. the U.S. and mm -hmm. then you came to Hong Kong. So you've seen both of the sort of startup um, ecosystems. Mm -hmm. What do you think Hong Kong could learn from the U.S. and from you know Silicon Valley? What are some of the things that Hong Kong perhaps isn't doing right or is doing right in your opinion? Sure. Uh, when I, when we started in the states, I felt that uh, there's so many support from you know private institutions, you know like schools mm -hmm. or even the government or. Uh, or for example, private uh, uh, investors. There are so many angel investors, VCs, and accelerators, centers. Mm -hmm. uh, you feel like you know the whole world is sort of supporting you to do your your own stuff, mm -hmm. which is really great. You know, like people pitch ideas all the time. You really have elevated pitch. You see people. You talk to people, and then they like it. And mm -hmm. that. And in Hong Kong, I think uh, the difference is really about you know the community. You know, like we don't have a strong sort of startup community supporting uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, recently, we have you know places like Cocoon or like other startup sort of uh, uh, places uh, to to gather people. Mm -hmm. And I think Hong Kong, sh I mean, will definitely be. Uh, Beneficial to have you know those uh, communities or institutions, for example, Hong Kong U, mm -hmm. to support you know uh, entrepreneurship. Right, right, and um, well, you actually started your startup right after, and in fact, in uh, while you were still at university, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you graduated from Harvard, and your partner graduated from MIT. Mm -hmm. um, can you give some advice to you know the students that are in universities right now who might have their own idea? What kind of made you take that step to decide? you're going to do your own thing? Uh, I think, I mean, I won't uh, strongly recommend to start something while you're studying. Uh -huh. I think study is the time you should have fun. And I mean, if you find really something that really you enjoy doing and you think that it could be a, a kind of business idea or uh, an idea that can expand, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to make money at the first place, but then you should, students should, you know, uh, uh, go after it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe talk. I think that one of the key thing is just to find the right partners. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're in school, most likely your partners are people you already know. You know, like your friends, your classmates, or maybe even your some professors. You know, mm -hmm. I see you know partnership like between professors and students. This happens a lot. Uh, you know, like your your outside friends or maybe your families. You know, I think when starting a business, the mo one of the most important things is you know have the right partners. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Uh, if you have the right team, you can just you know go after it and try to develop your idea and expand you know pitch to people and see how people react. Right, right. And um, with your startup in particular, Eon, mm -hmm. um, it's it seems like it's like a social entrepreneur, social uh, mm -hmm. enterprise mm -hmm. because you know you're helping uh, blind people you know to right. have timepieces that they can use but at the same time you sell to retailers because it's a very beautiful design and I right. wonder if you could show <laughs> oh, actually sure. the, yeah. the watch mm -hmm. that you have there it's a very very interesting um, but how um, would you would you describe yourself more as a social enterprise then or would you do you mm -hmm. do you think of yourself more like as a business you know where how do you see how would you describe right. um, Eon? Uh, we, we want to see ourselves as a business entity, mm -hmm. but then of course what we do is maybe more than what normal business people would do, you know, mm -hmm. support the underprivileged. But I think that's exactly what uh, we are and our philosophy is, you know, and I don't think that it would be a conflict, uh, you know, by, you know, supporting the underprivileged and also selling to of normal course. people. Yeah. And I think that's really strong, mm -hmm. one of the strongest things for us and um, I think I think by doing so we really can bridge you know people in the society uh, mm -hmm. one, of, one of the thing, one of the things I always want to think about is that uh, you see blind people as a what underprivileged uh, group but actually they have the strong you know things you know they're exceptional in hearing mm -hmm. they can help so much in I don't know media industry you know like translation or mm -hmm you know, uh, doing other kind of um, sound related uh, jobs and doesn't mean that they can make money in the society. Right. I think that's exactly what we, 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 we are at mm -hmm. to really bridge the two sort of group. Uh, 
previously not as much connected, but now we can use the product or use our company's force to you know push right. the two groups. Right. Yeah. Well, it sounds really cool, and I, I'm really looking forward to seeing these timepieces myself and maybe buying one. Thank you sure. so much for Thank talking you. with me. Right. Thanks so much, yeah. Nick.